can read your mind. You're thinking, why is this guy wearing white socks? Well, the answer is simple. It's because my feet, or my right foot to be precise, is the star of this video, the hero. And I want you to be able to see it very clearly. And hero is no exaggeration, because today you're going to learn something that's going to make just about everything you play sound better which is why I'm showing you these clips of me playing a variety of musical styles. Now, our subject is how to use the sustain pedal or damper pedal. On an acoustic piano, it's the one on the right. Chopin, the great pianist and composer of the 1800s, called this pedal the soul of the piano, and for good reason. Now, you may think you already know how to use the pedal, but the fact is, students almost always need to be taught how to use it properly because the way you need to use it is going to feel awkward at first. I promise you that. If it doesn't feel strange in the beginning stages, you're simply not using it correctly and not getting the results you need. And that's because of the unusual timing involved and the extreme independence you need between hand and foot. But not to worry. Over the years, I've developed a simple exercise that works great. And you're going to practice that exercise in this tutorial. And having mastered it, you'll quickly get past the awkwardness and be able to pedal beautifully as you play. And from that point on, your music will sound smoother, cleaner, warmer, and yes, more soulful. So, whether you play rock or Rachmaninoff, you need this lesson. Let's get to it. Now, as I said, we're talking about the pedal on the right side on a piano. On a keyboard, it's a separate device that you connect to the instrument via a cable, and it sits on the floor. And the main function of the sustain pedal is exactly what its name would suggest. You press it when you want a note to continue sounding, even after you release the key. Now, there are many kinds of musical situations in which you'll want to sustain notes with the pedal. But the good news is this. What you'll learn today is the heart of the matter. Get this basic coordination down, and everything will follow naturally from that. Let's say you're playing something in which you keep repeating the same chord, like this. Notice how dry and clunky it sounds compared to when I use the pedal. And that's because there's no way I can connect the sound of one chord to the next using just my hand. I have to let the notes come up in order to press them again. And as soon as the notes are released, the sound stops. So without the pedal, we have silent gaps that detract from the smooth effect we're trying to create. So that's where the pedal comes in. I press it, and voila, continuous, uninterrupted sound. So that seems easy, and it is, until I change to another chord. And that's where the challenge arises. Suppose I want to connect this C chord to this G chord. Instead of having just the clean sound of the G chord at this point, I've got the notes of the C chord and the G chord sounding together and that's not pleasant. So, here's the solution. Let's say the blue bar is the sound of the C chord as it travels through time, and the yellow bar is the G chord. We do not want a gap in the sound like this. We also do not want a huge overlap between the two chords like this, because as you heard, that sounds muddy. So what do we want? Well, 
a tiny bit of overlapping. Because when you use the pedal to achieve this effect, the overlapping goes by so fast you can't hear the muddiness. All you hear is a seamless, beautiful connection. Now, as I said at the start of the video, learning to use the pedal is tricky at first. It feels just plain awkward. And that's because your hands and your foot will be traveling in opposite directions and at different times. But until you learn to use the pedal properly, what you can do at the piano will be very limited. Fortunately, I've got the perfect solution, a simple exercise that has worked beautifully for my students over the years, and we'll get right to it in part two of this tutorial. Later in part three, we'll apply the pedal to a variety of specific musical situations, and I'll even show you how to read the pedaling notation found in sheet music. See you in part two.